Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop and we are very happy to see you here today and happy Thanksgiving weekend. Well, for us Canadians anyways. So we're working on block three of our 2017 Christmas quilt and we're doing Christmas Holly Iris Fold, okay? So you need a kind of collection of greens if you so choose. You can use one color, you can use two colors, or you can follow the, the directions here where they're giving you three colors to use. Uh, I chose, I think there's six in here. I'll mix and match. I'll do what I want to do. Um, it didn't have uh, any like um, paper piecing for the berries. So I just chose some red fabrics that I have here. This was what was in the Gingerbread Men uh, last weekend. And so I thought incorporated a little bit in there. And it's also got hollies and berries on it, so why not? And make your own. You can do your own. You can do one circle, just one circle piece like that, or cut it in half, or whatever. Do some, do a little paper piece of the red, and then just cut three circles out. It's, you know, make your own. Be, be adventurous. Or make a yo-yo. Or, or buttons. You can use buttons, you know, if you want, you know, if you don't want to, you know, do anything too fancy, you just want to add some buttons, do that. Yeah, I think it'll be look awesome. All right, so we need to cut these apart because we need to work on each one individually. Okay, so we'll take our paper scissors. There we go. Little ones here. Okay. And you're going to end up cutting this out just like we did with the gingerbread man. Okay which turned out fantastic, isn't it cute? I did a little free motion uh, multi-thread um, tree in the background there and I also used the same multi-variegated thread to stitch them down because it was all the same colors as what was in the gingerbread man. Did a little free motion crescent moon and then just hand stitched a star. I also picked up some, this little glass bead kit. It was less than $2. Uh, it's got like six different varieties of glass beads and I thought that would be great for little applique after we were all done stitching it all together and actually making some stars with these beautiful bright beads. And you know, doing some up in here, like I've got lots, I can applique a lot of the blocks with this. So I figured for less than two bucks, it was a great investment and it's gonna add such a little flair to the quilt when it's all done. You know, that'll probably be a half a session right there. <laughs> is making it all purdy like all right so you got your three pick one to choose from you're going to start from the center and work your way out um these don't really specifically have number and direction to way to go it's number and direction of what color to put there if you want to follow it so i'm going to go pretty much what i think would be the best and just you know flip and flip and flip and see what piece would be the best for us to work with i think you're going to go up here and then over here, because this connects over just on that one a bit, so we want to make sure it has a leg in there. Um, and we'll just work from there, okay? You can, of course, um, save this file in probably a 1080p uh, folder and then be able to adapt it from there to make it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller depending on what you're looking for. Uh, if you want to make little uh, Christmas ornaments or if you want to make a big one, make a wall hanging just like the gingerbread man. We were talking about that last weekend. I mean, it's up to you. Okay, so now the hardest part is, is what do you pick for the center? Okay, and you don't need a whole lot. You just need a little bit. So let's go with this one. We might want to make sure we have enough to cover. I, I know it seems a bit excessive, but really, for that little triangle there, we want to make sure, you know, it's covered, okay? So the hardest part with the paper piecing is um, making sure you're lined up and you're not sewing multiple layers <laughs> and you're, uh, and you're on, on the line that you need to be. So I've decided I wanted to go with what 11A, I think that's what it is color-wise uh, for piece number two. So I'm gonna grab actually a little bit of this little holly stuff right here. So I'm gonna make sure it's a big chunk. Okay, and I'm gonna line up those two edges and I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna sew right on this line right here, the one that's just above, it looks like 11A. Okay, I'm gonna sew right there, and then I'm gonna sew that one, and then I'm gonna sew that one, okay? It shouldn't take too long. We'll, we'll put her away. Remember to sew on the other side. All right, wake up Mr. Nomi here. Oh, and change your th thread stitch to really, really low. Um, 1.4, 1.5, something in there uh, that's highly suggested. And if you need to keep your little spot, your fabric in place, uh, use a little dab of glue. That is apparently uh, quite the handy tip. So, 
All right, so put your needle down right where it needs to be. Do a little tiny little tack back and so long and tack back, okay, and cut. Okay, now that was our first one. So we're, we know our little piece is gonna cover our section. Let's fold that over and get a little press. Very excited, very excited, block three. Okay, now we want to do this piece up here, which is like was a 12, and we're gonna fold on that line. Okay, that's where I said, maybe sometimes you want this a little bit bigger, you know, maybe, maybe you give yourself a bigger line to look at, you know, it's up to you. Save all your little bits and bobs, so it could be useful for something. All right, now we take another color. Let's go with this one. Okay, we need a long strip because it's like a wedge. So let's go about there. And you can, if you want, you know what sizes you're going to do. You can pre-cut all your pieces ahead of time. I'm, I, I don't, I don't know what I want for what yet until I get there. So I'm just kind of cutting as I'm going. And like I say, none of my bits will get wasted. They'll get used. All right. Ooh, we still got a tiny one. We can do it though. We did that gingerbread, man. We got this. <laughs> that gingerbread was a little, okay, we got this, we got this. <laughs> little, little brain wrapping, but we got it. It was okay. All right. Okay. So there we go. Now we need to add that last one. It's right over here. And to me, it seemed like it almost attached to that one that we just sewed on. So I want to make sure we are right on that line. Okay. All right. Now fold and line up your seam allowance right there on that line. That fold is on that seam allowance line. Okay. And now we want to pick another color. Let's pick the gold one underneath. Okay. We need to... A wedge, a long wedge, okay. Okay, now we'll place it along that edge. Flip, we're good. Okay. Now it's all the way across, right? To me, well, maybe I guess that's that line. I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna sew all the way across it. I think that goes the way it's supposed to to me. Well, that's good. At least the locking stitch worked there. <laughs> I tell you. I've used my, my auto cut my scissors so much, they, they just look like the base handles of the scissors. They look like a couple of little eyeballs staring at me because the whole top part is all worn off on here. <laughs> I wore out the scissor button. <laughs> okay, give that a little press. And we're going to applique these down just like we did to the gingerbread men here to this beautiful blue fabric. Okay, that's, and you can make it as big or as small as you like. You know, your dimensions are, you know, what you're comfortable with on, on making your quilt. Okay, so that went all the way there. That's already there. Uh, I think we should do this one, which is... Well, it looks like eight or something. I'm not sure because then that attaches to this. So yeah, we need to do that. Sometimes you're just going to have to look at the image to figure it out maybe which one is next. Okay. I don't want to make it too complicated for you. But if this one can figure it out, you got this. I'm no genius. Okay, now... Let's turn and flip. Ooh, all right, we were gonna go this one. Yes, because that one needed to be attached on the other side. Okay. So I think that's right. Colors. Look how it's coming together. Okay, now we need to go on 
this line because we're kind of working our way around. Actually, we can go do the back side because the other one is it's that one's touching that one. Okay, so what is it? It looks like a 9B or something like that. The back side one there. Put it there. Okay. Now, do I have any of these pieces that would probably work? Do. Okay. Got that there. I think so. This one would work perfectly. Okay. Now we'll sew that down. Kind of making like a little box here. This hat is 21 and no, about 21 years old. Uh, it was made for our son <laughs> for his first Halloween by my husband's grandmother. And uh, there's a sweater running around too. What's, what's, what's going on? Oh, oh here? <laughs> and I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. We've kept it all the time. And sometimes, uh, you know, the stuffed bear gets dressed up for Halloween. He usually wears it. So it's one of my favorite costumes that he ever had. Okay. Now we're going to fold on the other line. This one right here. Okay. And there's a lot of bit left over here. You still may be able to use that. Yeah, maybe not. Barely a seam allowance there. Okay. Now, because we're going to do this one right here. We're doing that one. That one's, we're stitching that down to this one here. Okay, see how that one's going to go on that little triangle wedge? Now we need to pick a color. Let's go with the greeny dots. Kind of do some recycling around. And like I said, you can choose to just one green color if you like. I mean, it's completely up to you. I like a little bit of, you know, differentness. All right. That's a very busy intersection with that one right there. Kind of got like three little tips meeting at it. All right, now flip. And they're just little tiny triangles or little wedges that make it this up as it goes around and around and around. Okay. So now let's take a look at it. Let's see. I think we need to do this side to build this up but that needs to attach to there which it could if you cut it all right what's the next one let's do I think it's this one hopefully that's the right way hold on a second here let's think this out here there we go nope because that's not going to work off that side I think, I think we're going to go this way. Let me look on that just a second. Because that goes all the way to here to there. If I flip that over, that gives that something to attach to. And then that's something to attach to there. And then that, once that's is there, that's that. I think so. To me, makes somewhat sense. <laughs> I'm sure you can figure it out. All right. That's what we're going with. And of course, we get to make three more pretty much just like it. They're all very slight variation from each other. Okay, I don't think we have any chunks over there. Let's get some over here. All right. Now, line this up. Okay, and sew and flip. And backpack. Okay. Okay, give that a little press. I like how you mix in the fabrics. It really gives that uh, little holly a bit of dimension. Okay, and then we said we were going to go... Oh no, so that's attached to there. Oh no, that's... Is that enough of that? I think we already had to, three already lined up there because there's a fabric for it. So I think we did. I think we're as a game and didn't even realize it. This paper pieces take it over. 
<laughs> okay, let's try the goldy bits. We like the goldy bits. Is that going to be enough? It should be. Flipping on the end. Yeah, it should be enough. Always double check. Or the seam ripper will be used. Which makes us sad and then confused. Of <laughs> why we had to use the seam ripper. Okay. okay, now we can continue building this one out to the end, but we need to finish this side first. So that attached, okay, that gives us that to cut off. Okay. Do, do, do. Now we pick another color. What was that? It was Pokey Dee Dotty. Let's do this. Okay, hopefully it's long enough. Did I make it long enough? Yes, I did. Okay, so there. Line that up. Doing a long one right down here. And I did turn my machine down to a little bit slower, obviously, so I wouldn't lose control because I'm not just doing a straight stitch like crazy. Um, I did that last time too. I didn't make sure it was laying flat. It's Keith's my pumpkin face. <laughs> Scary pumpkin face. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Secret word is love. Secret word is love. Okay. I needed to say it right then and there so I wouldn't feel such hostility. <laughs> I need to be feeling the love. <laughs> Come on, it's like two little bits of thread. Wow. All right, there we go. Try this again, shall we? Make sure it's laying flat. Line it up. There we go. We got this. Of course, you don't know until you flip it over. And then you're like, it's all good. See? Look at all that depth. Look at all that depth. I think that's so cool. All right. Now, let's think about this a moment. We need to... Do, 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 do. We need to leave that one to last. We need to work on this side because one crosses over. So let's work on this one. So we only got a couple more to go. And then we got our one done. And then you know what you're doing. Just make sure the other two are done by next weekend. <laughs> okay, let's do... Oh, let's do this starry fabric. I don't even think we cut into that yet, did we? No, we haven't. I don't want that salvage edge in there. It's got little tiny dots on it, and I don't really want it right in the middle of my project, so we will eliminate that. We're working on this side. Yes, we are. Lined your edges up, and then sew down. Ooh. It has been it's been a lovely fall turn once the the weather turned it's been it's been lovely and it's great weekend for the air and fall fair there's hopefully there's a good turnout all around on on all uh, on all sides okay so we did that one we know we have this one up here to do and then these little bits over here so let's get this one done that very top oh, no we did that one already sorry it's this one I pulled it on the wrong line I was like wait a second 
we have him already. All right, there we go. Fold on that line. Trim, we just have a couple more. Okay. So now we want to see, what do we, what do we want our tip to be? If it's the starries on that side, let's get, let's get this light greeny bit back out. And if you've got more greens to choose from, go ahead. Or if you choose, like I said, just use choose to one color or use choose to do two colors, you know, alternate. I think that would be really kind of cool too. I can't decide on two colors, so that's why I chose six. <laughs> I can't make that kind of commitment of choice. I need more. It's like more flavors of ice cream. Okay, so that was there. Yes, that's correct. There we go. All right, that is so cool. Okay, just a couple more pieces. We got a little holly, little holly lolly. All right, now we are up on this side. So what do we need? We need some green with dots. Is this a big enough green with dots? Let's see. Yes, it is. Wonderful. Green with dots, it is. Is that the right one? Oops. You know what? I think I cut one off by accident. Let's try that again, shall we? Doo -doo -doo. There we go. Okay, that's a. That's as snug as a bug in a rug one, if I ever saw one. Okay. I don't even think I need to trim on that one. Just add another, another piece. Okay, now let's add, is that the same color? Nope. That one. Do, do, do. Okay. And then one tiny, tiny, tiny little piece. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Okay. And then one very tippy, tippy tip. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got going on here? Let's use this. Do, do, do. All right, that and this, and then press, and then done. Well, press, cut, then done. All right, okay, do, do, do. It's a moment of truth. Press this, and then we cut out on the line. And if it doesn't look like a holly, it's not my fault. <laughs> It's totally my fault. Okay. There's all our pieces. And there's our picture. Okay. Actually, where's my other ones? I like my other ones for red ones. At least my head wasn't attached. Nope, not those ones. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I did with them. I lost them already. Okay. Here we go. Now cut out. Pretty much on that line, your beautiful paper paste holly. Okay. It's a great gift to give somebody. You know, you could do these three on a pillow and then, you know, applique them onto, like obviously applique them onto something and then make a pillow out of it. That would be kind of cool to give for Christmas. Unique gift. Not making a huge commitment to, you know, a big old quilt or wall hanging or something. You can just do like a little pillow or a little table runner or a placemat. Options are endless. All right, here we go. Okay, we're gonna a little spritzer ritzer there. Just give her a little press. <laughs> what we think? Is it cute? I love it. Isn't it adorable? Can you see it, Pop? Sort of? 
Does that help at all? It's too dark. Too dark? Okay, well, I'll hold it up there. There we go. All right, that's one. Okay, here we have is the prepping for the next two as well as the berries. Uh, I just did it in picture form. Uh, it, to me, it just I thought I could get those really good details in there for you. And there you have obviously is number one is finished and ready to rock. You can see how close, look how close up those little tiny triangles end up being uh, when in the end when you're doing those little flip and fold. So we'll just see uh, the progress along. So you can see I have my, my next leaf. I'm picking that and then I'm going to pick my center and then I'm going to make sure and figure out what lines I'm going to stitch on because like those are just color references, not a less, uh, not sewing uh, positions. Those are all my color choices that I chose to keep my um, holly leaves in the same colors, just mixing them up. And there you go. This is the first start of the second piece, so the one and the two getting together and then I'm attaching the third. And you just do the whole flip and fold and flip and fold and stitch and there you go. Soon it'll be done. And hopefully you enjoyed the process. And uh, I really just thought that these pictures would really bring in the detail and you could see up close to how, how close and how tiny those little pieces are. I just, those holly leaves are just fantastic. And it was a good size for our block. And I did place it on a um, 13 inch uh, dark blue background. So, and you'll see the berries. The berries are just kind of made up whimsical on my own. I pretty much just kept it to three pieces. Uh, but uh, you can do whatever you like. You can use a button, use felt, use a little yo-yo, um, make whatever you like. Put a, a hexagon in there. It's, it's up to you. And then of course, you can free motion in the background if you like or add a very, you know, a decorative uh, background like with, um, you know, snowflakes or anything like that. You know, it's completely up to you. There's two almost coming to an end. We're getting there. You can see all those little sew lines and little threads. We've got, we've got a few more to go. Look, it's so beautiful. I love the just different combinations of the greens. Some with a little bit of pattern, some without. We've only got one more to go. Or is that just the back side? I think that's just the back side. And now, oh yeah, I was just trimming it out. Once you get the, the trying to deal with a tiny piece um, wrapped around in your mind, uh, it really becomes quite a fun little project. And pressing those pieces as you go as well because they are so tiny. See, now I have two. We'll work on the third one. And it won't take very long to come together. And they're all different. But if you liked one pattern more than the other, then I just photocopy that one several times and make that one. That'll be, if that's one you prefer. And keep your stitch really low to 1.4 and a nice neutral thread. You know, I just chose, I think it was just gray on this. I think that's what it looks like. It's just gray. I could have chose green because we were working in all with green, but it doesn't matter. It's up to you. It's whatever you have most on hand. It's not, if you keep your stitches really low, you're not really even going to see them as you're uh, sewing the bits together. See? Very, very tiny. The detail is just so much and I can see that you know as you're working across on this you just take your time and your patience and do your making sure it's going to cover the spots and flip and sew and you know trim and and so on and so forth and you can make some really really beautiful pieces so a couple blurry photos in there I just said to pop I, I took a whole bunch of <laughs> download everything <laughs> don't want them missing anything <laughs> That little wavy goldy fabric there it's like a little um, um checkerboard sort of thing I, that's one of my favorites i wish they had like a whole backing of that just lining it up so you see right there it's just trimmed and the access is just pushed to the side and if it's a big enough chunk then you can use it for another project you know look how tiny those are but make sure you're giving yourself enough fabric tiny little stitches not worrying about the threads until the very end these are so many. It's coming along. See, in this one, I kind of did a little base stitch around. You see how loose that was around? Just to kind of make sure those my fabrics weren't going to flip and flop of that as I was trimming it. That, to me, actually helped. It was kind of sad I thought of it on the last one. But, you know, nonetheless, for future reference, I will definitely be using that. And then I can just kind of... It helped keep it all tacked down, and I didn't find it had any floppy parts that I found that I think I'd have on number one. 
that one up there because. And then just be very, very careful when you're peeling off the paper in the background. Uh, I did it because those tiny little edge pieces are very obviously tiny. I kind of left the center with the paper in still when I went to stitch it down and I just trimmed like the first maybe two two layers of the outside edge just so I can make it a nice tack with my uh, stitch. Oh, get to the berries. I love the berries. Look at the colors. Just different. A couple, okay. I just chose a cap that was literally, I think it was from Mary Ellen's cap that came on her uh, spray and uh, traced it out onto the spare of the white paper, as you see, to make my berries. It seemed like a good size and just drew a couple of little lines. Uh, I didn't go with that tiny little piece there. I, you know, I, like I said, I did about three pieces per berry and, um, and just made my own and you can sew it in whatever you like. I don't know what I was thinking there. <laughs> it did, that did not happen <laughs> to say it. <laughs> But uh, we had wait, we had fun, and I just chose a few different colors, and uh, and just went with it. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna make my own berries. I'll figure this out. But see, in that little shadow line, that's just making sure I'm gonna stitch on that line. My fabric is about a quarter inch past it, and away I go. So you can make up your own stuff. I'm gonna flip it, trim it. That was pretty much my berry, and then I just cut it out. Right, those are the colors. I don't know what happened in the edge. Can't really tell. <laughs> oh, there was the hole I cut it out of. So lots of fabric, and I think I used more some of those other pieces, yeah, for um, uh, another one. Oh, this kind of looks like a ladybug now. It's cute. See there, I was peeling a bit of the back, nice and slow. Those with those tiny little stitches help with for sure. Make it a mess. That's my background. I have varieties of blue, so I'm mixing and matching as much as I want. Uh, my consistent theme throughout the quilt is going to be some matching fabrics from one piece of you know square to another, as well as the sashing. So I can have wild and crazy blues on every block if I like. It's going to pull it all together in the end. Don't be too concerned about the, the little stuff. So I've got my placement where I want it. If you want to make a smaller block, you certainly can. You're just going to have to add a bigger sashing around it or, you know, add a, add a you know, bigger chunk. That's the stitch I chose to uh, use for my applique. It was really quite pretty, and I chose green thread. I think I put the green thread in there so you can see it. It's kind of like an army green. And I thought it would just pull all those greens together. I didn't want to do too dark because I wanted it to kind of stand out a little bit against that blue, as you can tell. Um, to just give it a little bit of character. character. And just put it around, slow and steady. Just try to stitch it all down. my pins in right till the very end till I didn't need them anymore because I didn't want it shifting from my position of where I had it laid out on the block. As soon as those are done you start laying your berries and of course your berries stack on top of each other so you want to make sure you have that dimension in place. Changed my bobbin thread to red and changed my top thread to red as well. Oh that was the green that I used for Philippe. Good old Guterman thread. Um, that's a great place for me to use up some of my smaller colors like this is to doing this a bit of applique. And I just did the same stitch around each berry, placed it, did around, placed it, did around. You could choose a different applique stitch, you can do whatever you like. And that's pretty much the, the block is done. I didn't add anything else in the background, I'll probably do that with the, the quilting when we end up doing that. But, uh, I like it. I like the way it turned out. You got the other two. All right, so we'll see you next weekend. Well, actually, we'll see you tomorrow on the live stream where we're continuing to sew our little wedges together to make our tree skirt, which you have a chance to win. And hopefully you've been paying attention to all the secret words. There's been three so far. Um, and if you need to rewatch the weekend projects to deal with the Christmas, or, or, or that we're doing with the Christmas um, um, quilt, then they're there for you to rewatch and hear the secret word for yourself, okay?
thanks everybody for watching and subscribing and upvoting and you know clicking the little bell button when you want to see me all the time when I got something new going on and and we're always uh, putting out videos we're gonna do a couple of surprise ones or at least one surprise one for Halloween not sure when we're running out of time though <laughs> have a great one everybody enjoy your weekend we'll see you tomorrow bye